So I'm working out of Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership, a communication perspective, and they're citing research from Braddock and Mulak from the communication monographs article that they wrote years ago. And they're studying how speakers are perceived as powerless or powerful based upon the way they talk. Powerless communication lowers our credibility, our trustworthiness, our attractiveness, our confidence, our persuasiveness, a whole list of beneficial things that we want. And listeners often find it distracting and they retain less of what we say when we use powerless talk. Powerful talk is seen as talk without those powerless features. So really it's a matter of removing bad habits from our communication to sound more powerful and gain all of those benefits back, like sounding more credible, trustworthy, attractive, et cetera. So let's look at the first one. The first form of powerless talk is hesitations. Um, uh, well, um, you know, all of those classic public speaking fillers that we talk about are considered powerless. Those are hesitations in what we are saying. This is most likely the most likely kind of filler to reduce your perceived power. It makes you sound uncertain, like you're not sure of what you're saying. The next is hedges. Kinda, I think, I guess, sort of, something like that. These are also perceived as fillers. They're phrases, common phrases, that we often use as a bad habit. So let's compare these two examples. Compare this, I think we can get it done, versus we can get it done. By adding that hedge, that qualifier, I think it sounds much less impactful. Just saying, we can get it done, sounds much more confident. So you don't want to hedge what you say because it'll reduce the impact. Number three, tag questions. Isn't it, wouldn't it, right, okay? These come at the end of what would be a declarative statement and it indicates some kind of uncertainty on your part as the speaker. So here's how it would normally sound. He did a good job, right? So that word right is that tag question at the end, which calls into question everything that we just said. Now, you may want to use tag questions if you use them thoughtfully. So let's say you already come across as someone who's pushy and bossy and has a thick head. Every once in a while, you may want to throw in a tag question to signal that you have an open mind. However, in general, you don't want to add tag questions to your statements because it will hurt your credibility in the long run. Number four is disclaimers. This is where we will often undermine what we're about to say even before we say it. You might hear people say, don't get me wrong, or I know this might sound crazy, I'm not trying to be critical, or this is gonna sound weird, but, and then they go on to say whatever they should have said in the first place. This can signal a real lack of confidence, but again, we may want to use these occasionally for our own advantage. Again, if we come across as being very one-dimensional and thick-headed and we only have one point of view and we don't wanna to listen to other, other ideas, you may want to throw a disclaimer in there to create a little bit more space for other people to enter the conversation. But unless you're getting that feedback that you are only seeing things one way, you don't want to add disclaimers because it will undermine your credibility in the long run. Number five is accounts. These can be just excuses or justifications. This is where the speaker essentially denies responsibility for what's happening and that's going to hurt your credibility. So people might say it was an accident or I wasn't prepared because. To me, these sound young. When people are using excuses and justifications and giving accounts, it just sounds young, like someone who's really not mature enough yet to accept responsibility and it'll hurt your credibility. It'll hurt your appeal as you're talking to people. It'll sound powerless instead of powerful. So you don't want to overuse accounts. Of course, sometimes there are situations where it's legitimate, but as a habit, you don't want to fall into this. And number six are called side particles. Words like like, simply, that is, actually, basically. Sometimes people have these they're essentially fillers, but they have a telltale filler. Like I know someone who says basically in every couple of sentences, basically this, basically that, and it becomes this annoying kind of filler, a habit that people associate with you in general. You don't want to use side particles. You wanna get rid of these. So what can we do to get rid of our powerless talk? Well, essentially powerful talk 
is speech without power less talk. So we're talking about three tips and ways to practice this. First of all, notice your common habits. It's very unlikely that you do all of these. You probably have some telltale or signature fillers or common phrases that you use that are unique to you. So you don't use all of these at once. Very few people do, but you might have a few that people tend to associate with you. Number two, in most cases, simply removing powerless talk is that key step. Because when you take the bad habits out, you're going to instantly sound a little better. And instead, pause or fill that silence with the word period in your head. So instead of saying the filler, for example, you just say period at the end of a sentence. So let's practice. Here is a powerless example. And I jammed a few different problems into this first example. I think we should order uh, chicken wings, uh, pizza, and uh, soda. Don't you think? So there's all kinds of problems there. Notice how much better it sounds if we just remove them. I think we should order chicken wings, pizza, and soda. And what I'm doing is I'm just pausing and saying period in my head when I see punctuation there instead of filling it in with these powerless talk habits. Let's try another one. Here's the powerless example. This is probably going to sound weird, but I think workshops and uh, trainings are uh, a good first step, don't you think? So again, I jammed a few of different ones all together there, and here's how it sounds without those. Workshops and trainings are a good first step, period. So I'm saying that word period in my head so that that's my clue to myself not to fill in with some kind of words, just to let that silence ring out as a silent pause. So question of the day, what are your bad habits? I would love to hear your bad habits in that section below the video. Remember, identifying your own bad habits is the first step to removing powerless talk from your words so that you sound more powerful as a consequence. I look forward to reading your comments below. Take care and I will see you soon.